Welcome to Susquehanna Express. This webcast is all about young people that are making a difference. The first person we'll meet has raised over $4,000 for kids in the West Bank. Then we head up to State College, Pennsylvania to the God's Call event, where I talk with two young people who are actively seeking God's will in their life. Lastly, we'll meet someone who has been to the White House. She and a student joined with 150 others of different faiths to talk about joining together on social issues such as poverty, hunger, and domestic violence. You never realize how much playgrounds are a part of your childhood until you see kids who don't have any. Rebecca Hosier is a 14-year-old from St. Paul United Methodist Church in Chambersburg, and she has raised over $4,000 to purchase playground equipment for children in the West Bank who didn't have any before. Thank you for coming and talking with us. Thank Rebecca. you for having me. What started this idea of raising money for a playground equipment in the West Bank? Well, my mother and I went to a conference, a peace and justice conference, in March of 2010. And we ended up on a break. We went down, and just, I wanted to take pictures of the graffiti on the wall. Since it's actually free that you can just go in, it's legal to go just paint on this wall. So it's pretty cool. So I went in to take pictures, and we happened by chance that there was someone at the building. They invited us in, gave us tea, customary over there. And one of the coordinators there, um, Usama Nicola, came in and he told us about the Reconciliation Center and he ended up telling us his story. And he talked to us about how even he and his kids as young as two and five are affected by the war and the separation wall and everything that's going on over there. And um, after that he went and just took us on a tour of the building and he told us that they had an empty lot that they wanted to make a playground. And later, back at the conference, I had the idea that I wanted to raise a few hundred dollars to help them out, and went back home, and that's just kind of how it started, went and raised money for them. What did you do to raise money? <sighs> I talked a lot. <laughs> I went to many places, and I just told the story of what was going on over there, and people were touched, and they helped. Um, I sold olive wood. Um, did a lot of that on Sundays after church. Um, I helped out at the community breakfast one Saturday at the church. The church definitely helped me out. They went and they rolled with it. They just gave people, gave them their hearts and really helped me out there. So it was a way really not only to raise money for the playground, but also to share the story of the people who you had met as well. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, once you had raised the money, did you buy the equipment here in America, or how did you get the playground equipment there? No, that would have been very expensive <laughs> to ship the equipment. It would have been just as much to buy it as to ship it. So we sent the money over, and they bought the equipment there. Okay, so they were able to choose what equipment that what they equipment wanted, they wanted and where and everything. So, what kinds of equipment are on the playground there? The basic playground, like slides, swings, seesaw. Giant spinny things that no one knows <laughs> what they're called, but all the kids love them. Mm -hmm. Just the regular playground stuff. Were they surprised by the money that they had received for the playground equipment? I think we were all surprised because I went into this for a few hundred dollars to buy a swing set or a slide, ended up coming out with thousands of dollars. I think we were all surprised by the number. And you were able to return and actually see the fruits of your labor then as well, correct? Yes, we returned in October later that year. Um, just for a mission trip, we ended up working at the Bible College, which is down the street from the WM. And we passed and saw all the kids playing on the playground. Oh, it so must be a wonderful feeling to be able to was. see it actually in use. It was. Yeah. Um, do you think that this has started a spark in you for um, continuing with Global Ministries? Oh, yes, it def definitely has. My whole family has felt this spark. We want to go over, volunteer, help out with the people over there. It really touched us. All right, well, I thank you for sharing your story and for sharing your story with so many other people and for just following that nudge and um, just 
raising money so that those people could have their request fulfilled because you followed that God's Thank will you. in your life. Hello, I'm here at the God's Call event at St. Paul's in State College. I'm going to be talking with some of the young people who have come here to discern God's call on their life. I'm speaking with Erica Conklin, a theater major at Messiah. What brought you to God's Call this weekend, Erica? Well, I, this is actually my fourth God's Calling event. Um, I came the first time as a freshman in high school, or a sophomore in high school, I'm sorry. Um, as a result of having an amazing calling experience at church camp over the summer. Um, so I was given the recommendation by my pastor at the time to come to this event, which I did with my youth leaders, my chaperone, which was a great experience. Um, and every year I've learned something very new about my call. Um, for example, I think I definitely feel called to being an ordained elder. With, I'm looking potentially at extension ministries in the future, but I've really been battling with what it means to me to be both a theater major and looking towards God's call, because initially I just chose to be a theater major, mostly because I wanted to do something that I really enjoyed for those four years that I'd be spending at Messiah College, but I realized this weekend through a really awesome presentation that I can really bring scripture alive through drama and I'm very excited about that so all right well are there any particular parts of of the God's Call event that stick out to you in your mind I think for me just the conversations that I've been able to have with different individuals snippets of knowledge that I've picked up from different people are what matters the most about this conference that's where I learn the most well, thank you very much for talking with us Erica at the God's Call event, I shared a little bit about how my path to my career has definitely not just been straightforward. And I've had a zigzag of switching majors and so forth. And then Austin came up to talk to me later and said that he felt like he understood exactly what I was talking about because he has gone through the same thing and is recently um, decided to make a switch in his career. Can you tell a little bit about um, why you came to God's Call and then a little bit of, of the switch that you're making in your life? Certainly. Um, my pastor originally invited me to God's Call event. So I came along mainly because he invited me, but then as I thought about it more and as time went by, I realized there's, there's two callings that I currently have in my life, one that I have, I have accepted um, and one that I'm still trying to discern for myself. Um, I did go through a little bit of changing throughout my college career. I switched my majors multiple times, um, graduated with a degree in business, not sure if that's what I want or not, but that's, that's what I got. Um, and I'm currently working full time um, in, in central Pennsylvania uh, doing a, a technology job and I love my job, it's fantastic. But um, a few things over the summer happened in my life that um, made me think about, is, is this where God wants me to be? Um, I mean, I love my job, but I wasn't sure if, you know, is this where God wants me, me to be or is this where, where I want to be? And so I prayed about it over, over months at a time, and um, I, I came to the conclusion that it's not where um, God is directing me. I mean, I'm, he put me there for right now, and that's fantastic, but he wants more out of my life. And so I prayed about it, and I really felt God calling me to do more with, with missions. I looked into different mission programs that I had um, looked at when I was graduated from college, and um, I, I came to a long-term missions trip called um, With Adventures and Missions, which is a nonprofit organization, um, and it's called The World Race, and it's going to take me um, to 11 countries in 11 months, um, basically just spreading the Word of God to, to every place that we go. Um, I would just be in a community of believers and just spreading the, the Word of God through evangelism, through playing with orphans, through um, uh, just playing praise and worship songs during church services, Bible studies, and, and all sorts of things. And, and that's a big change um, for my life. That's the call that I have right now. And, and I've, I've, it's been affirmed in my life in so many ways. But the secondary call that I'm, that I'm really trying to discern as well this weekend is, is what to do after, 
after I get back from my mission trip because I know I'm going to change as a person. I'm going to change um, in so many ways my relationship with Christ. And when I get back from this trip, I, I don't know what I'm going to want to do. And that's the call that I'm really um, starting to try and focus on. So um, this upcoming year, I'm going to be um, fundraising. I'm going to be um, getting prepared for my mission trip. I have a, a blog spot, Austin Olsh, U-L-S-H, dot theworldrace.org. Um, and people can follow me on there. They can go online and learn more about the World Race, what it is, um, Adventures and Missions, and that um, organization. They do tons of, of short and long-term mission trips. Uh, it's a fantastic organization. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Austin. I was really encouraged by hearing a story of someone that truly reevaluated their life, even if they were happy in their job, to um, just think about what God really wants them to do in their life. And so many stories are like that here at God's Call. Mira Hewlett, Director of Religious Life and Community Services at Dickinson College and her student, Sarah Boyer, received the chance to attend a multi-faith conference held in the White House last October. Thank you for coming, Mira. Yeah. How did you and Sarah get the chance to go to the White House for this multi-faith event? Well, my student, Sarah, found um, it online through the Interfaith Youth Corps, which is kind of the group for um, interfaith work amongst college and high school students. So she found that opportunity to apply and she applied for both of us and then a couple weeks later we found out we were accepted amongst thousands of people that had applied. Wow and was the event for specifically college students? Yeah this event was geared towards college students and their allies so you had to have a student going uh, with a faculty or staff member um, because the real hope is that you would bring it back to your campus and talk about interfaith and what is interfaith in our communities and on our campuses. Okay, now speaking of interfaith, you are an ordained Methodist pastor. Mm -hmm. At the campus, do you get to work with lots of other faiths? Yes, my role includes working with students of all different faiths and no faith. Um, we have about 70% Christian students on my campus, um, or who identify as Christian. And then we have Jewish students, which are about 10%. We have some Muslim, Buddhist, and Hindu students as well. So it really has been an opportunity to kind of see the world in a different way. What were some of the main points that you took away from that conference? Well, the theme of the conference and what they really wanted us to take back was what if. And it's a campaign to say, what if people of all different faith backgrounds came together and worked to improve their community? So that it didn't matter you know, what you believed or how you believed, but that you really wanted to come together to do something in your community. Are you going to use any of the information that you learned from that conference for programs to implement at Dickinson? Yes, one of the programs we saw was um, a university out in the Midwest that was doing a Stop Hunger Now event. So we are working to get all of our different religious life groups in campus, plus other students involved, to package 25,000 meals in one day in April. And then also do something with our local feed bank as well, to kind of bring the local, but also the international piece. Okay, well it's great that your student could be so inspired. I heard that there was a quote that you also were inspired by. Would you mind sharing that? Sure, one of the neat opportunities was we got to go into the White House on um, a day and they really framed the conference um, around the quote from President Obama in Cairo, uh, June 2009. And it says, faith should bring us together. And that's why we're forging service projects in America to bring together Christians, Muslims, and Jews. Around the world, we can turn dialogue into interfaith service. So bridges between peoples lead to action. And that was really kind of, that's what they're trying to do with the interfaith movement, um, is to work with college campuses so that your faith brings you together to improve your communities. Because that's a core of where all faiths, you know, go back to and really want to empower others. What is a really great message that you gleaned from that service that you mm -hmm. can just bring together all different kinds of people for the common good? Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. Thanks for watching Susquehanna Express. Be sure to check my blog for a hint at our new format at susquehannaexpress.blogspot.com.